morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to another encouragement here at I Am Second Channel. My name is Brother, because it doesn't matter who I am. The only one that matters is Jesus. Welcome, YouTube family. Welcome, Facebook family. Welcome, um, my forever family. I call you my eternal family. Brothers and sisters, I'm coming out of a scripture that I know we talked about before, but it bears talking about again because it is something that we always run into, and I mean all of us. And I'm talking about falling into sin. I'm talking about blowing it. What to do when you've blown it again? In Psalm 51, this is King David. When, when the prophet Nathan came to him because he had been with Bathsheba and because he had murdered her husband, had her, her husband murdered, Uriah the Hittite, on the front lines of the battle, David had the, the, had the other men around Uriah uh, take a couple of steps back so he would be end up standing there by himself and he got killed. Murder. Sin adultery with his wife because he stayed back while his men were out there fighting. The king stood back while his other men, godly men were out there in the fight. Are you standing back while the rest of us are in the fight? Am I standing back while my brothers and sisters are out there in the fight? What to do when you've blown it again? David says, have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. Because he's depressed at this point. He knows what he's done. Nathan came to him and gave him this story. I know a man that, you know, <laughs> you know, and go back and read the story. I'm just giving you brother nobody version. I know a man that, that did this and that and, and the other. What would you do to a man like that? He asked David. David like, man, I'd have that dude killed, man. I'd put that dude before the firing squad. I'd have him stoned. And Nathan, the prophet during David's time, said, David, the man I'm talking about is you. David like, oh, my God. Because he had been not confessing this thing. And now that he's been he's been busted. What to do when you've blown it? He goes into this depression, but he, he pins it in this prayer. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In your great tenderness, wipe away my faults. He's finally getting his heart right. He's finally coming to God to talk to him about it. You got to get one-on-one -on -one with the Father. If you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to purify you of all unrighteousness, 1 John uh, verse 9. You have to come to it and lay it out. David is finally doing that after some time. In your great tenderness, wipe away my faults. Wash me clean of my guilt, Father. I'm feeling so guilty. If, you're, if you have the Holy Spirit, you cannot go on sinning. You will feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit. You will feel that pressure on your life. You better confess that thing and repent of it. What to do when you've blown it with Jesus? Wash me clean of my guilt. Purify me of my sin. He's begging the Lord. Not he's in that right position. And again, he's trying to make things right. You got to get position right now. Okay, you fell. Don't let the devil bring you all the way down. Get in a, in a humble position with all of your heart and begin to confess that thing. Confess that sin. Say exactly about that sin, what the Lord says about that sin. Don't water it down. This is not that time. What to do when you've blown it with Jesus. For I am well aware of my faults. I didn't went over this stuff, Lord, in my mind daily. I can't shake it. I don't even want to deal with nobody. I have my sin constantly in my mind. It's constantly in, my, in, in the front of my memory every day. And I'm convicted by your spirit. That's why I'm, it's constantly on my mind. And the devil is telling me that I'm, that I'm filthy. And I am. And that's why it's on my mind. 
having sinned against none other than you. He was so tight with the Lord. That this is why it was piercing him. Because he knows how good God has been to him. And some of you, you know how good God been to you. I know. See, I, that's why I can't go back to the world. I know how good God been to me. But he gives us a way out through confession and through being real with him and saying you're sorry and getting up and turning away from your sins again. Having done what you regard as wrong, he's really laying out his heart. See, David, we need to listen to what he's doing here. Don't hide things in your heart. Tell the Lord everything because it says in Psalm 139, before a word even comes off my lips, you know it all together. Where can I go and hide from your spirit? It says, you know, I, I can't go nowhere. The Father already knows and he's looking at you when you do that thing, that thing you did. And you know that thing you did. He sees me. This is why I watch myself. I mean, people think I'm crazy, but I'm like, the Lord is watching me. How can I do this thing? And even when I'm by myself and I want to do dirt, the Lord is watching me. The same one that y'all hear me talk about every, you know, when I get on these, these encouragements, he is, he's watching me. And that it means something to me. He's my Lord. For God so loved the world, right, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe on, rely on, trust in, leaning on with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul, all of your strength. Believing in what he did at the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. That he went there carrying your sins and mine. He had never sinned a day in his life. In his earthly life. He laid down all the, just everything that, that caused him to be worshipped and eternal. There with the Father from the beginning. He laid it down for me and for you. To bring us out of this when we when we fall, when we blow it, what to do when you've blown it big time. If you trust in that and that alone, what he did at the cross, you shall be saved. Hallelujah. But yes, the Lord wants us to turn away from our sin. Does turning away from our sins save us? No, the blood of Christ saves you. But you're fooling yourself thinking you're saved if you never repented of your sins. How about that? You need somebody to tell you the truth. And somebody and some, some of us get in trouble for these things. And I'm willing to get in trouble so you hear the truth. Hallelujah. You are just when you pass sentence on me, David said to the Father. Blameless when you give judgment. You know I was born guilty, a sinner from the moment of conception. From the moment I came out of my mama's womb, Lord, I was already guilty, born a sinner. You know already, but the Lord, he chastens those that he loves and he disciplines those that are his. He's going to spank you. He's going to spank me if we stay in intentional sin. Yet you love sincerity of heart, so here I am on my knees. I'm calling out to you. I'm asking for your forgiveness, Father, Daddy, Abba, my Lord, my Savior, the one who died for me. Hallelujah. Teach me the secrets of wisdom so I don't go back to that. Show me how to be wise. Purify me with hyssop. Is just an agent back then, uh, some type of agent that really uh, brought things that were white back, like our Clorox, but it probably was way better. Purify me with hyssop until I am clean. Wash me until I am whiter than snow. What to do when you've blown it with the Lord? 
instill some joy and gladness into me. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice again. Notice this is the Lord's punishment on him. The bones you have crushed, let them rejoice again. Lord, I'm so depressed. I'm so put off by my own sin, my own perverseness. Hide your face from my sins, Father. Wipe out all my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, Lord. And he telling them about regeneration. This is the new birth. You must be born again from up above. Create in me a clean heart, Lord. Renew in me a steadfast spirit, a faithful spirit, one that constantly comes after you, one that refuses to sin. And yes, we will blow it, but your heart refuses to sin. That's the born again heart. Please be assured of that, brothers and sisters. Don't banish me from your presence. David, like, all I, this is it. This is all I got, Lord. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm guilty. Don't cast me away from your presence. Don't deprive me of your Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, please hear my heart this morning. What to do when you've blown it again? You've disappointed Jesus. You, you've blown it in your family. You've disappointed your wife or your husband. You've disappointed your children. What to do? Well, yes, you've hurt them, but the one you most need to get it right with is Jesus. Because your soul could be on the line because you won't let these things go. But the Lord is merciful. Lord Jesus, we've blown it before you, Lord, time and time again. We, we call on your boundless mercy. We ask you to help us, Lord. Clean us up again. We are guilty of that thing. We lay it before you, Lord, and we ask you to make us wise and make us holy. Help us to live for you, Jesus. Help my brothers and sisters that are listening. You love them so. And so I love them. And I'm telling them what you want me to tell them, Lord. Bless your name, Jesus. Father, thank you for hearing us. We will be so very careful to give you all the praise, all the glory when we see as we see these things turn around. And even before then, we give you glory now because we know you're hearing us from on high. Thank you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray and say amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, thank you so much for listening. And then please give me this video the thumbs up so that not only you will hear, help this, this, uh, this video to be shown to others who are hurting. And go out and encourage someone yourself today. I mean, this life not just be about us, but really about Jesus and him working through us. Love you so much, family. Until next time, be blessed. I'm second.